We have a very important call, namely with the general director of the health, uh, the the, uh, the the healthcare hospital from Lodi, who is also managing the emergency in Cardano. So please connect us with Max Barawitza and Massimo Lombardo together. Both are dealing with an emergency. Good evening. Can you hear me well? Yes. We can hear very well. It's a pleasure for us to have you here tonight for this call because for sure the uh, situation we're experiencing right now in Italy is very strong, very difficult. So having you here with us, considering what you are managing in your area is a great honor for us. So I'd like to thank you very much for sharing your time with us, taking your time to spend some interesting work with us and to foster international cooperation to find solutions, not just for the emergency right now, but also for the aftermath and to start again. So I'd like to start with a few questions to the general director of the uh, Lodi Hospital and the um, health care uh, organization. So for you managing the Colonia emergency, what uh, did it mean for you to be at the very heart of the epidemic? Sorry, the audio is very poor quality. So it's like being impacted by a massive machine basically so we have to change our reality deeply there were lots and lots of people with symptoms sorry we can't hear very well it's probably due to my phone we can hear better now maybe is it better now okay i'm gonna speak closer to my phone okay i was saying it was like a huge emergency so it meant many, many or oh, serious cases coming to our hospitals. We had to completely change the organization of our hospital. We needed to organize new areas. Please, we still have the problem. You need, probably need to lower the volume, to reduce the volume of the loudspeaker. Do you have some echo? How is it now? Good? Basically, we needed to reorganize our hospital. And this uh, put us in the spotlight in front of the world, of course. But this meant international cooperation too. Italian cooperation with other hospitals. Since you are dealing with the communication, we've been talking together. You're supporting the municipality of Codogno in this situation. So managing this communication, how difficult it is for you? How difficult is it for you? Uh, well, managing communication in such a crucial moment means two main purposes we're trying to attain constantly. The first goal is to have a communication that can help people understand, understanding what's going on in and outside the hospital. And the general director Lombard and the crisis unit have had a very good idea. Instead of closing down the hospital and making it a sort of uh, castle or fortress in itself, they decided to use the media and cooperate with the media to talk to the audience in a very transparent and responsible way. So this was the first goal, so to provide information, to help people understand what the real problems are and to understand what the daily activities are for healthcare professionals. And the second aspect that is very interesting to me is that 
for such a small hospital in the province of a big city. So having such a big media attention, being in the spotlight at the national and international level and being on the press and so on and so forth, meant having a further stress. Not just the stressful work the healthcare professionals had to perform. So the group that is working with me, the team working with me, has tried to become a connection between information request and information feedback for the media, because media need information once or twice a day, and this is what we did. So these are probably the most important points. Let's try with the director again. So I tried to wear some headphones. Let's see whether it works better. Now we can hear you perfectly. Very good. Let me repeat the question. So as I was saying, since February 20th, we've received uh, waves of patients. Uh, twice a day they came in uh, dozens. So 10, 15 ambulances with uh, serious cases uh, which or, or, or normal cases which became serious in a very short time. So it was a maxi emergency, a very big emergency, but repeated over and over again during the same day. So we had to reorganize our hospital completely and monitor uh, what we were doing every day. So we had to um, have an exchange with other institutions as well. So we opened up to bigger hospitals in Milan, for instance. We began a remote uh, dialogue with the University of Wuhan. We opened communication channels with anyone who wanted to support us and to help us understand what was going on. So uh, Medicine Sans Frontier came also. We had a conference call with a hospital in New York. Uh, even before the emergency in the US. And this uh, was a great thing for a small province hospital because we felt the responsibility of tackling something big and we decided to do it uh, as uh, best as we could. So with no limits, no barriers, cooperating with everybody, trying to see what we were doing and uh, monitoring at least twice a day what we were doing. Yes, very complex situation. Let me ask you another question. Now, so today we've introduced several innovative Italian projects and digital projects. Uh, later on, we'll also have international projects. We'd like to share with you as well, because maybe they can help you and support you in this situation. But I wanted to ask the director, um, in terms of digital health, so medical and ed tech, how far can they help in this situation? Well, they helped us a lot. Uh, several years ago, we decided to invest a lot in digitalization of our healthcare service and having four connected hospitals with uh, digital clinical records and making it possible for professionals to exchange uh, digitally information gave us the opportunity to have new diagnosis opportunities, possibilities and a collective clinical work basically. So the choice we made in the past was very useful in the emergency situation. We are using this to monitor what we're doing it basically because we've got a massive quantity of clinical data we are processing. We're trying to rationalize in order to understand whether we could have done better or what we can do better for the future for this illness that has really struck all the healthcare systems all over the world, not just in Italy. Yes, of course, this is very important. So uh, hopefully we will go on this way. Let me ask you a question, Max. I know you have a very short time. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but at uh, six we will have a break, of course, and then we will move on to the other topics. But I wanted to ask you also in terms of digital opportunities. We've uh, seen that fake news, online fake news, are influencing people very much. In your work, 
digital communication and digital transformation in the healthcare sector. Uh, what are the um, problems you have to uh, com you have to take care of? Uh, you have to pay attention to values for sure, because a value you have to take into account in digital transformation, like a mantra, is ensuring safety in data sharing, data sharing, because. For sure, any solution, beautiful solutions like the ones that were put forward a few minutes ago, need to take this into account. For sure, data need to be kept safe. Uh, private data, citizens and uh, sensitive data need to be protected and be safe. Another thing is oh, that is also related with safety tra is transparency. In this case, we've been listening to Ms. Lombardo talking about interconnected clinical records um, from different hospitals. So interconnection of data is also very important. We know that there are technologies like distributed led or blockchains, they can actually help in co-managing sensitive data. Um, and last but not least, reliability. Even more so nowadays, because we realize that all applications, technological applications, all data processing, digital data processing, make sense if they are useful. In the healthcare sector, being useful means being very reliable too. Perfect. Thank you very much, Marx. Thank you, Ms. Lombardo. Both in terms of communication, but also in terms of uh, technological and digital innovation, we give you full support, of course, as a community. We uh, want to support you constantly in order to improve the situation. Thank you very much for your work and enjoy your evening. Mm -hmm.